Well, howdy, y'all. I'm out here staking down my beehive because I heard from Doug yesterday with Off Grid and Doug and Stacy that his horizontal hive had blown over. The wind blew it over. Well, uh, he's got, uh, I think he's got his legs at a 45, so the base is wider than the top. And I, I didn't do that probably because I can't cut a 45 to save my life, but anywho, did that. And uh, I mean, didn't do it. And so, and also because my legs are, are higher, uh, I wanted them high enough, highest off the ground as I could put them and still be able to work in there well enough. Uh, so I'm out here staking them down. I got these little uh, miniature rebar stakes that are made for running electric fence lines so i'm driving those in on each leg as deep as i can get them that one there hit a root so it ain't going too far <laughs> but i drove it down into that root i may never get it out here's a good picture of what what i'm talking about you've seen those i'm sure we got one more to drive but i was it's the one closest to the v entrance right there so i wanted to give them a break from driving the last one um, because i'm not protected out here and i didn't want to fire them up too bad so far they really had not acted like they minded it so what i'm gonna do uh, once i get those stakes driven in is i'm going to use some wire and i wish i'd have thought about it i may go back to the house and get a drill and uh, drill a hole through each of the legs those legs are treated lumber and on top of that they've been painted um so it wouldn't hurt anything to drill a hole through it but i thought about uh you know drilling a hole through the leg then i could stick the wire through the holes and and really have a good a, a good grip on on those posts um you know i don't know if i'm gonna do that or not if i don't i'm just gonna i got plenty of wire and a stiff wire so i may just wire it to the post as tight as i can and with many 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 loops around and going up the post and uh you know it's got those since it's rebar kind of like stuff it's got those little ridges on it and you know it'd be impossible if i can get it on there snug enough that'll be the test i think i'm just gonna wrap it and if i can twist the wire tight enough i'll let that be it uh, if i can't i'll go to plan b and drill holes in the legs but boy i'm gonna tell you something these girls are working their panties off i don't know if you saw the video i posted last night uh where we did the hive inspection by the way i looked in there today and didn't see any small hive beetles in the big open area so i'm thinking you know they by reducing the size of the hive area that the bees will be better able to patrol it look at that pollen look at the fat pollen pockets oh look at that one look that's two right in a row every day it seems like i sit out here a few minutes and kind of count pollen bees not really count them i'm not keeping track of the number but i just sort of notice how often the bee comes in with pollen and every day it seems like there's fewer and fewer non-pollen carrying bees between the ones coming in with pollen. So that's good to see. Look at that, that one came in just now loaded. It's so fun to watch, it's just mesmerizing, it's relaxing. And it just causes me to give praise to God, give glory to God for his creativity, uh, for for the creativity of his creation, the ingenuity of these little critters. They work so well that everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. They hand off those job assignments based on age and whatnot. And that's just a, you know, creation cries out as evidence of a, of a creator. And it's just amazing to me. I kind of get tickled when I hear evolutionary biologists talking about uh, certain pollinating pl plants that need pollination co-evolving with the bees. Well, what a coincidence, huh?
Well, how about this? How about an almighty, perfectly brilliant, perfectly lovely creator that created bees and flowers uh, to complement one another? How about that? How about them apples? Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And go Tigers. All right, I feel pretty good about that. That thing is strapped on there tight, so tight it's cutting into the wood. And, uh, you know, with the little ribs on the uh, rebar thing and having it on all, all four legs, I think we're good to go. This one's all crooked because I hit a root and I couldn't get it out to, <laughs> to start again straight, but oh well, whatever. So now I need to come out here with some yellow paint and uh, paint that so it'll look all right. But like I said, uh, I, you know, if you put run into it with a bulldozer, it'd probably blow over. But I really think with all four legs anchored down like that, uh, I think we're going to be fine. Would it have been better to drill a hole in it? Yeah, probably. Uh, should I have done that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I didn't, so we'll see. Maybe I'll learn a hard lesson. Uh, but hey, let me show you, before I sign off here, let me show you right quick what I did in the empty space in the hive, on the empty half of the hive, to, to hold that divider board in place. If you remember on the uh, last video, um, I, was, I, I was concerned that it wasn't going to stay in place. Well, Patty's a genius, and she figured it out. Let me show you what we did. Well, I went back to the house, and I was telling Patty I was having trouble getting that divider board to stay upright because it... Uh, the box is not perfectly the same measurements from one end to the other. And when I had the divider board further on this side, it fit, but it was a little loose right there. She said, well, Tommy, put the frames in there. And I was like, duh. So then I, I thought I was about to put all the frames and I got six or seven or eight of them with uh, foundation on it. And I thought better of that because I said, you know, that's liable to attract the um, small hive beetles and maybe wax moths too so i didn't want to do that and so i just brought the ones with no foundation and wouldn't you know it it worked fine where i was able to have four uh frames next to the divider board and i had one more left and it fit perfectly like this to hold it in place uh, yeah, it's got a little play in it, but though the it's enough friction, enough force against that board to hold it in place. So that's what we've done. And when I looked in here this morning and did that, there you see some small hive beetles, but those are ones I killed yesterday. I haven't seen any new small hive beetles in this side of the hive. So I'm hoping that means that they've got... Um, that the bees are able to patrol the smaller space created by collapsing, uh, not collapsing, that's a bad word to use in beekeeping, isn't it? <laughs> by uh, compacting or uh, making it smaller, making the hive area smaller. So anyway, I'm pleased to see the girls busy at work. And I uh, just wanted to let you know about that, what, I'm, what we're doing. Jump on over to Off Grid with Doug and Stacy and tell Doug you're sorry to hear his hive blew over. That's terrible. I'm thankful that he took the time to let me know because then now I can take precautions. So we got some bad weather coming tomorrow. But that bad weather will not keep us from recalling that he is risen. We serve a risen Savior. He's Lord. Yep, he died, you know, on... Good Friday, uh, but Sunday's coming. Low in the tomb he lay on Saturday, but Sunday he was up and out because death couldn't hold him. Hallelujah. Hey, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. It don't matter whatever strikes you. If you hadn't subscribed, do so, and I'm going to keep uh, putting up little newbie beekeeper updates from here at Alderman Farms Apiary and Bee Sanctuary. Have a great weekend.